is Corinna Bench, the farmer's wife at Shared Legacy Farms in my kitchen. Here's Katie Jardin, our CSA coach and dietitian. And here we're going to do a, a tutorial today teaching you a vegetable exit strategy. So when you get a lot of greens like spinach, um, this is a really quick way to uh, make it smaller and freeze it and uh, put it away for long-term storage. Um, so why don't you get us started on how to freeze spinach. So blanching it before we freeze it is really going to allow it to keep its taste. It's not going to become as bitter. It's also going to preserve a lot of the nutrients and keep its bright green color, which is important. So, okay. yeah. So we washed this before the video, and now you are ripping it apart. And the reason you're doing that? I am. So we could definitely just throw this spinach uh, and blanch it. And we probably will end up doing that with some of it because we have a lot of it. But just kind of tearing them up or cutting them into however you want to eventually use them, depending on what recipes you use more often, is going to make it that much easier when you pull them out of the freezer. Great. Yeah. So we wash this. I think I've got this almost full here. Um, I think they say it's about 10 to 12 cups of raw spinach will blanch down into one cup. Yeah. So it's we filled this. I filled this um, pretty full. And you don't have to have something like this. You could also just throw the greens directly in the boiling water, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then strain them out or pick them up, you know, and drain them a little bit. This just makes it a little bit easier. So we decided to do this today. So um, this is spinach. You can also do this with kale, with dandelion greens, with beet tops, with broccoli leaves. So you can do it with a pretty large variety of greens, collard greens. Um, spinach is a really light, thin green. So when we blanch it, it's just going to take like 30 seconds, maybe a little bit longer. Um, depending on the green, like collard greens can take up to two minutes. Um, so you just want to wait and make sure that they will, but it, just know that it can happen very quickly. This is not something to walk away from. Right. So we have this water boiling. Um, we did add a little bit of salt. That's mm -hmm. pretty much all you need in this process is whatever green you're going to use, your water, um, your ice for your ice bath that we'll talk about, and then some salt. So we actually just used... Um, some regular sea salt. It's important to add salt to your water. Not only does it help to keep the flavor of the green, but it's going to prevent a lot of the minerals from being leached out. So that's a great way to make sure that we keep the mineral content of the vegetables that we're blanching. Um, adding a little bit of salt, because it increases the mineral content of the water, it's going to prevent as many minerals from leaching yes. out. Um, you do want to make sure that you have your ice bath ready, which is what she's getting ready for us now. It cannot just be lukewarm or just kind of cold water. It has to be an ice bath because we're going to blanch this quickly in boiling water and then putting the greens in really cold water is actually going to stop the cooking process. So if it's not cold enough, the greens are going to continue to cook and we don't want that. We want them to be cooked very quickly just in our boiling water and then we want to put them in the ice bath. Alright, so we've got this bath. Um, I'm going to put this in the water, I'm going to grab it. So you can see that at first this was really full, um, but as the greens on the bottom, the spinach on the bottom starts to wilt down, the greens are on the top. We're also starting. <laughs> yeah. Just going to let it drain a so little while. So it's hot, you want to be careful of the uh, steam factor here. So you could at this point, um, if you didn't have a pan like this and you just had the greens obviously in the water, um, you could pour the water out into a strainer, you could get it out with some tongs, um, whatever you felt like was going to work the best. You can also reuse this water um, if you're blanching a lot of greens right now. So like if we wanted to do another batch of spinach, um, we could probably just reuse the water. So I'm going to put this right into the ice bath. So you can see how full this pan was when we first started. And remember, it has to be really cold. You want to stop the cooking you process. You have to stop the cooking process. So however long it took you to blanch the green, I would give it that same amount of time in the ice bath. And I kind of like to stir it around that way 
way we pool all of the spinach evenly. So something with like collard greens that you had to blanch for several minutes, you would need an ice bath for several minutes. And if you notice that all the ice had melted, you'd probably want to add some more. So there are a lot of different things that you can use frozen greens for. Um, a really common one, easy one, is obviously like soups. So just always having some fast greens that you can throw into soups to kind of add some nutrients and some flavor that way. Um, we'll talk about freezing it in smaller portions and that way if you are making an omelet or some eggs or a quiche, you can always grab some frozen greens out to add to your eggs. It's a fantastic way to get some veggies in um, at breakfast. Casseroles, pasta dishes, um, stuffed lasagna. pasta, yeah. lasagna, you know, having things that are easy to grab in the freezer are just going to make you that much more likely to add some vegetables to your meal. Obviously spinach dip, we mentioned before, is going to be a popular one here at your house. Yeah. Um, and then just learning um, how to saute some basic greens and like some oil, some garlic, some salt right. and pepper. A super easy fast side dish that you can whip out of your freezer and have done in a few minutes. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so I'm going to see for most of this. So you can see it kept its bright green color, whereas if we were to just throw spinach in the freezer without blanching it, it would eventually um, lead to a really like a dark brown type color. So we don't have to have the spinach totally dry before we freeze it, but we do want to absorb a lot of the excess fluid to prevent ice crystals um, from forming. So. So we are going to put these on towels, or you could do paper towels. Mm, that's so good. Good? Awesome. You guys, this spinach is like out of this world good. I mean, it's nothing like a grocery store. I don't mean to plug my own I stuff, know, but yeah. it's really sweet. <laughs> I think it's something about growing it in the winter that it... In a CSA program, Shared Legacy Farm CSA program, um, and you get overwhelmed with some of the greens over the summer, like um, broccoli leaves or beet tops, or you're not really sure what to do, if you don't know what to do at that moment, just blanch them and put them in your yeah. freezer and that way we can just figure it out. So don't throw them away, don't compost oh, them, yeah. just figure out how to save them for later because over the winter you might have a little bit more time and then you can spend some time googling how to use your frozen broccoli leaves. So yeah, exactly. um, don't don't get overwhelmed, just get them in the freezer. Right. Um, Dropping them off? Yeah. More spinach for later. Yeah. If you're not used to eating, I think we're okay. okay. If we're not, if you're not used to eating cooked greens, just throwing a little bit of cooked greens into your soups and things like that is gonna, um, you know, start to change your palate a little bit, and you'll realize that they are really good. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so we Look got that shrunk down. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> we have a few different ways now um, when it comes to actually freezing the greens or spinach. Sure. Um, you want to freeze it, however. However, it's going to make it more user friendly, I guess I want to say, for you to use, use it. it. So um, for some people, if they are a person that knows that they're going to use spinach in larger quantities to make spinach dip, to saute spinach with some garlic, um, you can simply freeze it in Ziploc bags in larger portions. Or if you know you have a recipe that always uses one cup of spinach, yep. then you would freeze it in one cup portions. So you could freeze it. In the bag like this, you just want to make sure that you do get the air out and seal it up and obviously label it. Um, once you freeze it like this, it's going to be good for 8 to 12 months. Eight, yep, 8 to 12 months. Yep. Um, the other option is if you're not really sure, I like to do both ways. So if I have a recipe that calls for a lot of spinach, I can do that. Or if I need a quick side dish, I know I have the spinach. I also like to add green sometimes to, in smaller amounts, like to eggs, or um, maybe I want to throw a little bit in a soup, or in another side dish, or in a pasta dish, or a casserole. So I also kind of like to freeze it little balls. in smaller, yeah. yeah, like little balls. So you can freeze them in smaller portions if you want to. Finish. Remember, we said like. 10 to 12 cups of spinach to get one cup. So that could be like an entire cup or two of spinach. If I can get my toddler just to eat that little bit of spinach, it's going to be worth my time throwing it yeah. into a recipe. You so. hide it in your food. Right yeah. Now. Yep. You can also throw it like this into a smoothie or something if you wanted oh, that's to. Good idea. Yep. So um, I 
I would also freeze portions like this. I would cover it with some plastic wrap. Let's see here. And I'm just covering it while I freeze this um, to also prevent some of the ice crystals from forming. So I would actually just put this in the freezer for a couple hours until these freeze. And then once they're frozen, then I would put them in a Ziploc bag. Yep, so that way they're frozen in separate little balls and I can just open up a Ziploc, together. won't stick together, and I can grab out a small one or a larger one depending on what I'm making that day. Mm -hmm. So pretty easy stuff. Yeah, I love that. Some of them, when you go to thaw it or go to use it, obviously if you're doing like a soup or a stew or something where you don't care about the water that's going to come with your frozen spinach, you can just throw it right in. Um, if you do care because the spinach is going to retain some of that water when you freeze it, you might want to thaw it out a little bit first. So you could thaw it in the microwave for a minute or two. Um, you could also heat it on low in like a saucepan for a minute or two and kind of drain some of that fluid off before you add it to a recipe where you might want a little drier product like an omelet or a quiche or something like that. So you can thaw it out a little bit first if you need to. Freebie, Freebie yeah. So if you want the step-by-step -step directions of what we did today, you can go to sharedlegacyfarms.com slash freezing spinach. That's what you'll get. So, yep. Um, so thanks for joining us and enjoy freezing some spinach, yeah. do some freezing. You'll, you'll be glad you did this summer. Bye. Have a great day.